In this bulletin, over 400 COVID cases recorded. Fiji Pine shuts mill temporarily. And rate payment process affected. Good afternoon. There are 431 cases of COVID-19 and three deaths in the 24-hour reporting period that ended at 8 yesterday, the highest to date. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says the first death was a 74-year-old man who was brought to FEMAT in acute respiratory distress. The second was a 71-year-old man also brought to FEMAT unresponsive. A death which was previously under investigation has now been classified by the clinical team also as a COVID death. There have now been 24 deaths due to COVID-19 in Fiji, with 22 during the outbreak that started in April this year. There are 11 COVID-19 positive patients who died from conditions that they had before they contracted COVID-19. There have been 36 new recoveries reported since the last update, which means that there are now 3,896 active cases in isolation. We have recorded 4,849 cases in Fiji since the first case was reported in March last year. We are now 77 days into the second wave. Fiji Pine has temporarily shut its sawmill operations in Rasalotoka. According to Fiji Pine, operating in the current environment has been challenging. However, they have adapted to the new normal and adjusted their business plans to suit the new environment. While the company continues to export wood chips, their sawn timber sales have taken a major hit with sales below 30% of what they used to have in the past. However, they have also engaged staff from this department and have provided alternative work. So if you look at uh, our DASA sawmilling operations, the sawn timber uh, or the sawmill is completely down uh, and it has been down for the last four weeks. And uh, we anticipate uh, this to continue uh, for a major part of uh, uh, July, for the month of July, because we haven't seen any uh, uh, or a major uh, improvement in the uh, uh, market demand for sawn timber. The backup page on Facebook is now a go-to platform for most secondary school students, especially during this school break. Coordinator Epi Rawalai says over 20 teachers put together secondary school lessons to help students during this challenging time. Rawalai says the platform is an initiative from a group of people who graduated from the Fiji College of Advanced Education. What we do is teachers, they teach for a maximum of 30 minutes. They can either go live or they up, uh, upload uh, videos of their, of their teaching. It is also a platform for, for secondary school teachers to sharpen their skills. Some schools uh, have been sharing the videos uh, that we upload on the backup. They've also shared it on their online platforms. Rate paying process has been affected during this outbreak. This was confirmed by Suva City Council's Special Administrator Isikeli Tikondondua. However, the disruption does not affect the council's ability to carry out the services required by ratepayers. Tikondondua says that technological advancements have allowed for direct payments. We have seen a slowdown, but we've been fortunate because a lot of ratepayers now are using the technology on uh, MPISA and all the other uh, uh, direct uh, payment instead of physically presenting themselves to uh, the office. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama stresses that Fiji and New Zealand's partnership aspires to promote regional solidarity. Bainimarama highlighted this in a meeting he had with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. He also reiterated that an enduring partnership between Fiji and New Zealand is the foundation for achieving shared goals and aspirations in areas such as resilient health care, peace and security, climate change and disaster resilience, economic reform and joint advocacy on Pacific priorities. Bainimarama thanked the New Zealand government for its swift mobilization of support to Fiji with the provision of personal protective equipment and economic relief package estimated at 14 million Fijian dollars. And more recently, the deployment of New Zealand medical professionals as part of the medical assistance team to work alongside Fiji's healthcare professionals in tracking and containing COVID-19. 
And to our latest COVID-19 update. Fiji has recorded 431 new infections in the 24-hour period ending 8 yesterday morning. Once again, we have cases mainly in the central division. But as mentioned earlier, there are also new areas of concern in the west. Fiji has recorded 4,779 cases since April of this year. There are now 3,896 active cases in isolation with 918 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 24. Up ahead, Kota confident in core players and Rakesa determined for a medal. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Flying Fijians will want to continue where they left off in the Autumn Nations Cup after a comprehensive victory over Georgia six months ago. This is easier said than done, with Fiji set to play one of its biggest tests with the All Blacks after more than a decade. Head coach Vern Kota has named a mix of young and veteran players for the two test series, and players like Leone Nakarawa help, will help build more depth in the squad. One of the things we wanted to do was just have continuity from, from our tour up in Europe. Uh, there were a couple of players that were unavailable. Uh, Leone Nakarawa was unavailable. He's back with us, he brings experience. We got Simone Kuravoli who comes back to the team, a young player from the island. He was a good mixture. Training amidst the pandemic with limited resources is not what Iosef Rakesa imagined his Paralympic preparation to be. Despite the limitations, Rakesa is determined to put on a good show as he competes in the shot put and javelin event for his first Paralympic Games. Standing up on the podium to get a medal for Fiji is the goal for the 25-year-old. We have to improvise now with whatever we have. I have my set of training equipments at home, just a few to help me train, and I train with Coach Fred, who has been very helpful. Uh, we will have to deal with whatever we're facing here in Fiji. At the moment, he's training with me, no sorry, uh, coming daily from Suva. Um, we're just hoping that uh, the lockdown uh, comes to an end soon. I have prepared well, and I'm thankful that through all the struggles, I will continue to try my best and make Fiji proud. Rakesa will compete in the Paralympic Games, which begins on August 24th. Benina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Melbourne Storm's Josh Adokar scored a hat-trick in the side's 13th straight win following a 46-0 thrashing of the Roosters in Newcastle last night. Despite a tight opening 20 minutes to the match, five first-half tries to the Storm ultimately proved too big of a task for the Roosters to overcome as Melbourne. Cloudy with brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of Viti Levu, Vanua Levu, Tavioni, Kandavu, and Lao, and Lomai Viti Group. Fine apart from afternoon or evening showers over the rest of Vanua Levu, mainly fine elsewhere. That's FBC News now. Join us for our one hour major bulletin at 7 pm. And be sure to download the FBC app to access the latest in news, sports, and live radio broadcasts from any of our six FPC radio stations. Stay safe and good afternoon.